it was a big challenge. We played Liverpool three times in the last eight weeks or something. So to come out um, out of that in the situation where at the moment uh, is really good, but it's just a few games. And um, now the most difficult thing is to find the consistency every three days to keep performing and uh, and try keeping the results as well as possible. So we are on that train at the moment. We're in the middle of what is, on paper, a tough run of away games at the moment. However, at home, we're unbeaten in 10 games dating back to the Chelsea game in December. How crucial is it going to be that we keep up our home form? Yes, I think um, we can create the Emirates a uh, uh, fullness for us. I think it's going to be crucial for the future result at the end of the season. Um, not just with result, but as well the performance and, and what we can inspire and we can transmit at home and, and play with that confidence at home that uh, we have to be really resilient and, uh, and dominate games and, and impose ourselves in those games. So I think the game on Sunday is um, a really difficult one. Um, I watched the Sheffield games already and, um, and they merit much more from those games. And uh, the way they play it, uh, is tricky, so I'm expecting um, a really difficult game. Thanks, Mikael. Hey, from Premier League. Morning, Mikael. Um, you, you say that Sheffield United uh, warranted more um, from their performances, perhaps, but they've still got no wins this season. What have you made of their season so far? Well, the margin in the league of winning, drawing and losing are really small and the details are crucial. But they have generated uh, big chances every game and they've been really unlucky, in my opinion, uh, not to get anything out of those games. Uh, we have the experience to play against them, both uh, in the Premier League and on the Cup. And uh, I will know how difficult it is to play against them. The season they had, the way they have evolved the team uh, since they joined the Premier League has been unbelievable. The work that the manager has done with the coaching and staff, um, with the resources that they have, I think is remarkable. So um, we need to be really alert and we have to play our best again. Yeah, they took um, four points off you last season, but you're a very, very different team and squad this season. So do you feel like it's going to go differently? Well, I hope we can go on Sunday and, and grab three points because it's going to be really important for us before the international break. Uh, the difference is, I think, in both teams, uh, you will notice some changes in the structure and players. Uh, it's a different game, but we know what they're trying to do and we know how difficult it will be. And they have the necessity for points as well, and that will make the, the team um, even more ready for that. Um, just finally, Bakayo Sacco played really well last night. Congratulations, by the way. Um, it's been a really great week for him as well. Is he pushing for a starting place on Sunday? And what does he bring to your team? Bukayo is always pushing. pushing in every training. He's pushing in every game. Uh, he's pushing in the way he conducts himself. Um, first of all, I'm delighted for him. I think he completely deserves the chance to represent um, his country. And uh, he just needs to keep doing what he's doing, and uh, he will keep it evolving. Thank you, Mikael. Thank you. Jeremy Sky. Hi, Mikael. How are you doing? Hello. Um, only a couple of days left now with Mikael on the transfer window. Arsenal fans are desperate for information about who Sebu are from Lyon. What can you say? How confident are you a deal can be done? Well, I am very confident about what we are trying to do internally. Um, the clarity and support that I'm finding from everybody at the club uh, to try to improve the team as we can. But most importantly as well, to get the right balance in the squad for now and the way we want to evolve the squad in the future. So we, we are already much aligned. I'm afraid that I cannot give you any updates or, or news. Can you give us an update about Lucas Torreira? Uh, are we expecting to see Lee Arsenal in the next few days? I will give you an update with any play at the moment that we have an update to give. At the moment, unfortunately, there is uh, nothing concrete for anybody. You mentioned uh, William Saliba last night and, and why he's not been playing. Um, we understand his mother may have died. Is that true? And would you consider loaning Saliba back out, um, given what's been happening to him? Well, last night I explained uh, the difficult year that the player had and the plan that we had with him for that transition year 
that uh, we could not achieve. So um, we are looking at different options um, to try to have the best possible development for the player and to protect, uh, obviously, our intention with William uh, for the future and uh, to both be aligned and make the best decision for now and for the future. Just finally from me, Mikhail, I mean, the next few days of the window, I mean, how important are they going to be for the club, would you say? Yes, I think it's a crucial moment because at the end it defines um, the people, the players, um, the balance and uh, the quality that uh, you're going to have for the, for the, probably for the rest of the season. So, um, yeah, we need to make some decisions in the next three days. I think everything is being delayed so much. It's not only us, but uh, probably every team because of the context that uh, we are at the moment. But uh, we will try to make the best possible decisions. And, and at the end, whatever we have, we go for it, fully convinced and, and prepared to have a, a good season. Thank you so much. Thank you. George, did you say? Thanks, Mark. I mean, Michael, um, if you don't sell, are you going to have potentially a lot of unhappy players that uh, they're not going to play? So, you know, they, they could potentially cause you issues? Well, I don't know. And the, the way we try to manage the squad to uh, communicate to the player, um, we just try to tell everybody the role uh, that we expect from them. Um, the players have really good communication with myself and the coaching staff and the club as well to, to put on the table the feelings, how they see themselves, what they're looking in their careers. So we just try to assess everything individual, but as well in a collective way. And uh, a player that doesn't play is, is never happy, and I don't want them to be happy. What I want them is just try to earn that place, try to change it. We have a lot of examples uh, since I joined the play that they weren't featuring too much, they weren't playing a lot, and now they are playing regularly. So I don't like the excuse saying it's a lot of competition, I don't get the chances. Take it the other way around, just work hard, be involved, and when you have the chance, instead of talking outside the pitch, just do it on the pitch, which is the best uh, way and most efficient way to talk. Um, what, job, what did you make of the job Chris Wilder done last season when they finished ninth for their first season in the Premier League? Incredible. I started to analyze his team uh, two years ago and, and get to understand some of the things that he was doing. And, uh, and I think him and, and the coaching staff have done a, a really, really good job. And not just for the way they play, but because it's a very clear style, but as well for the culture they created around the club, the spirit that you can sense around the team and how they compete. So I think it's remarkable what they've done. What made you, you mentioned two years ago, what made that happen? What, what first drew your interest to Sheffield United in the way they played? Because they would have been in the championship then, wouldn't they? Yeah. But, uh, I was told by somebody else that uh, we had to look at them and I always like to see different trends, different ways of playing, formations, structures, patterns. And, um, and I was impressed with some of the things that uh, they were doing. And um, it's always good to, to have this information. Thank you very much. Good luck on Sunday. Thank you very much. Ian, talk talk. Hi, Mickey, how are you? Hi, Ian, good. Um, well, I'll ask for that on your win. Just a quick thought on Manchester City in the quarterfinals. Thank you, yes, I was enjoying that. It was a really difficult match. I mean, I have to twice, and after five minutes, we got the draw against City. Um, yeah, we had some tough opponents uh, from day one playing Leicester away as well, but uh, you have to go through the competition and play the big teams. Um, this time it's going to be at home. We know the challenge that we'll face again, but uh, we'll be prepared. You won the FA Cup last year. You did bring really well in the League Cup this year. Um, the Cup form is, is exceptional. If you could just make that every single week in the Premier League, you really would have turned Arsenal around in double quick time. Yeah, then we'll be fighting with Liverpool at City. It's easy to say. And the hardest thing is to get that consistency over 10 months every three days. And that's the level. And, um, and that's what we have to get uh, as quick as possible, and, um, and that's our aim. You do get the feeling though, for Arsenal fans that they are, they are excited by what you're doing. They, are, they believe they've got their club back after the previous manager and, and, and after Arsenal winning the ring at the end. So, you know, you're obviously doing something, right? Well, I'm glad to hear that they are excited and, and hopefully they feel proud of uh, how the play is. 
um, and the club are trying to present uh, the team every time we play, it doesn't matter where. Um, it's still a long way to go, in my opinion. Uh, I think we are in the right path, but it is good that that synergy between players, club and fans um, is back on track. Um, every time I get messages and I get the feeling that uh, they are very much on board, they are desperate to come back to the Emirates and the players as well. They are desperate to have our fans back and see that support and connection again because that cohesion is vital for our success and hopefully we can have them back in, in our stadium very soon. Just one more on transfers. I know you hate talking about transfers. I know you hate talking about players individually. But as I'm, I'm a club at the moment in, in terms of COVID and, and the economy from COVID-19. How much of a drain on Arsenal would it be if Mesut Ozil stays beyond Monday and doesn't play and just sits there for the next 10 months taking £350,000 a week out of the club? Well... Well, yeah, it's not that I hate the transfer window. I think it's completely necessary. It's, it's a big part of our industry, and as well, I think a lot of people lost it because these trading players, and, and I am a fan as well, and, and you want to see a player in your team, and it's that excitement. I have my kids playing all the time, manager and FIFA. So it's part of our industry, you know, and this period you have to pay attention to it because it's really important. We have to try to manage, first of all, those expectations that have to be realistic for us. And then with the players and the squad that I have, my job is to manage it as well as possible to take the maximum performance out of them, you know, and have a stable team emotionally and in terms of performance as well. And, and whoever is here, try to get the best out of him and, and the contribution that this player can make to the team. Brilliant. Good luck with you, Thank you very much. Mark, Press Association. I'm Cal. Um, obviously, from the run of, of questions you've had, there's obviously still plenty of transfer transfer speculation at the moment. But um, if, if the club didn't sign anyone between now and the deadline, w would you be happy with your squad moving forward? I am very happy because the way we are acting and, um, and the way we are approaching and the way we are doing the processes um, around the market, around the squad, the communication uh, link that we have at the moment between myself, the group, the boards and the ownership is really good and I'm really satisfied. And I know that we are all trying our best to improve the team and take, try to take the direction uh, to achieve the goals that we want. After, to achieve it or not, sometimes in a deal a lot of things have happened. You have three or four parties that have to be involved in but we are trying our best, and I am really happy um, the way this link and communication uh, is flowing at the moment. So if no players were to come in, the, the blame obviously wouldn't lie. At the it's because, it's because we can't do more. You know, we are trying our maximum, maximizing our resources, full support from the ownership as well with what we are trying to achieve. Um, and it's uh, whether we can do it or not. And with what we have, believe me, we will try our best, we will have the players um, trying to give them the best possible environment, the best possible coaching, and have them believing that we can achieve what we want to do. And uh, it will be with a more, one more player, two more players, or two players less, we will keep doing the same. You mentioned uh, players that, are, that might not be involved that much in the coming weeks, but that you've always got, the door's always been open with you. I think you look at players like Aisley and, and Mo and Nene, are they examples to those players that aren't getting in the team that you will recognise if they work hard, there is, there is a chance they'll come back? Absolutely. Obviously, every individual player has um, has a history at this football club. You know, a player that is just coming through the academy, the first year he's able to take certain decisions. The second year becomes a little bit hard. The third year is demanding more and more. more. But it's always the balance. balance. How, how much are you giving? How much are you willing to sacrifice and work in order to achieve um, if your dream is to play for us in the football club? And I think we have some really good examples. Um, what happened with Eddie, what happened with Ainsley, what's happening with Joe, what happened with Bukayo, what happened with Danny Ceballos, what happened with Rob Holding. So it's about that. And um, when I see uh, a player really willing and really trying and really making the only emphasis is to contribute to the team and try to raise the performance of himself and, and the collective side, he's going to have a chance. And then just, just finally, um, last night was the first time 
uh, Granny Jack, Jack has been captain from the start of the game since, since the, the incident last year. Was, was that a hard decision for you? Did you talk to Granny beforehand, beforehand or was it something, something that was just always going to happen? I didn't talk. Um, I have to evaluate uh, what, what happened since I joined. Obviously, I can't deny the history, um, but I have to follow my my gut feeling. He's a leader. He's unquestionable. Um, he does it every day in training. He does it the way he behaves himself. He does it the way he competes. And for me, it was a natural choice. Thank you.